These crystal formations look pretty complex, but they were actually generated by duplicating one shape a bunch of times and then randomizing the rotation and the scale. Once the generator is set up, you can use pretty much any shape you want as a base too. So that's what we'll be making today. And if you want the project file that I'm using in this video, I always make those available on Patreon, as well as coupon codes for free Gumroad products and a bunch of other files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate some of the profits to environmental causes each month. Link is in the description. Here's a summary of what we'll cover. We'll start by modeling a simple shape for our crystal, then we'll use geometry nodes to distribute a bunch of points onto it. Each of those points will have an instance of our crystal on it. Then we'll randomize the scale in the rotation, we'll follow the same steps to create a second layer of smaller crystals, we'll add some deformation to get the shape a little more irregular, and last I'll give a quick tip for using the glass shape. So here we are in Blender, I'm using version 3.0 for this one. So first thing we're going to do is start off with a basic crystal shape. Um, this is going to be pretty easy, you can pretty much use whatever shape you want, but for this one I'm going to use a cylinder. I'll change this to 8 vertices right here. We'll go into edit mode with tab, control R to add a loop cut. I'll bevel that with control B. And I'll just go into face mode right here, select the top and bottom faces like that. S to scale, shift Z to constrain it so it's not moving on the Z axis. And I'll just hit zero, snap those together. And uh, select everything, hit M to merge by distance. That'll just dissolve all the points up here. And then I'll scale this in again, shift Z, so it's not scaling on the Z axis. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, now that we have this, let's create a new workspace up here. Go to general, geometry nodes. I wanna be able to see this a little better. Usually what I do, come over here, turn on cavity, kind of highlights the edges like that. And I put on both. It adds, I think a little like ambient occlusion. Then matte cap. And I usually like to use this one. That's just personal preference though. Okay, so hit new. This will add a new geometry nodes modifier right here. I'll enable snapping. So these all snap to a grid like that. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do is scatter a bunch of points on here and then instance this shape back onto itself. So let's get a distribute on points with shift A. I'll hit S to search, distribute points on faces like that. So this will make our original mesh disappear. If you want this to uh, instance on top of your original mesh, basically you just need to add in a join geometry node right here and just join it with the original geometry from the group input. All right, and then we want to instance, instance on points right here. And for the instance, we're just gonna grab, once again, the original geometry right here. And now comes some randomization. So we can randomize the scale. We can also randomize the rotation. The way I like to randomize the rotation is just with a random value node right here. So if you plug this in directly um, using a float value, it'll basically use all of the same values for each of these. I want to be able to change these individually. So I'll change this to a vector like that. We can plug this in. Uh, for the max value, instead of one, I'm gonna use tau, T-A-U. That's basically pi times two. The reason I'm doing that is because we rotate over here with degrees, but over here, these aren't degrees, these are radians. And so two pi is the same as 360 degrees. So this is just telling it the maximum is 360 degrees. The minimum, I like to do just negative tau, so it can move in either direction. And we can control the strength of this with a vector math node. You can plug that in here, and you can either use multiply or scale. I like to use scale. Um, and if you turn this down to zero, it'll basically not be randomizing. You can turn it up just slightly if you want it to be off just by a little. I'll just put it up to one, keep it completely random. So yeah, you can also control how many points there are. We'll control the scale with uh, a noise texture like this. And if you want, you can plug the factor just directly into the noise, just like with the random value. If you use the factor, that is a single value. So these will all scale uniformly. It's pretty much the same as changing all of these at the same time. If you want them to be more random, you can use the color input. You'll see what I mean. So you can see how some of these are a little flatter than others. And that's because th these are all scaling uh, different numbers like that. What I like to do is bring in a map range node and also a separate 
RGB. So right now the color is three separate values, an R, a G, and a B value. So when we plug it in here, it's kind of like giving us three separate factors without having to add more than one noise texture. So it's just a little more lightweight. I'll just plug the R into here. I'm also going to turn the detail just all the way down. I'll set this to something like two for now. And I'll add a combine XYZ and we can plug that into the scale. And I'll just plug both of these into the X and the Y. And right now this is going to look just flat and bad because this is still set to zero. I'll set it to one and I'll make another one right here. This is going to be for the Z value. Basically what I want to be able to do is make it so we can scale it along the Z separate from the X and the Y. I want to make the scaling a little more drastic. So I'll change this to like 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.2, and 0.8 like that. And if you want to set the maximum and minimum scale, that would be the two min and the two max. So if we don't want this to have a maximum of one, we could make it smaller like 0.7, something like that. And if you don't want it to be able to scale all the way down to zero, you can just reset this to like 0.1 or something like that. I'm actually going to leave these at one like that. So minimum 0.1, so that way it doesn't scale down too small. I kind of like how this looks where some of them are really spiky and some of them aren't. If you want to be able to switch between scaling it evenly, there's actually a switch node right here. What I like to do is plug this one that we're using for the X and the Y into true. Uh, and we have to change this from geometry to float, I believe. So plug this into the true and then plug the Z value into false like that. Then we can plug this into the Z value. So now, when this is on, it will scale evenly. So all of these, they're just scaling up and down, but they're not really squashing and stretching at all. And if we want to control this from the outside over in the modifier panel, we can just grab a group input. I'll just duplicate this and bring it closer. And we can just plug one of these new slots into the switch right here. In the geometry nodes workspace, I'll just hit N to open this up. We can go over to group and change this to something like scale evenly and now we can control it over here like that. So I'm going to change the noise texture to 4D and we can change the W value to basically get like a new seed. And I like to use the noise texture for this because when we turn the density up really high and we affect the scale, you start to kind of notice clusters where uh, there are a lot of small crystals and somewhere there are a lot of big crystals. Next thing we can do is uh, if we want to create even more crystals, we can have like a second layer of instances. So basically what I'm going to do is bring in another join geometry node. We're going to distribute points on this geometry right here, and we can plug the points into the join geometry. So now you see we have a bunch of points all over the place. Actually, let's look at these separately. You can either hit uh, alt shift and left click to view it, or you can just plug the points directly into the geometry over here. Okay, so you can see that the way we have this set up over here, some of these points are going to be big and some of them are going to be small. So all of these will have points in the same spot. This crystal and this crystal are a little easier to see. They both have points in the same exact spots like that. That's because it's treating all of these uh, crystals like they're just duplicates of each other. If you want that to not be the case, what you have to do is realize instances. And it will basically turn all of these instances into kind of like real geometry. It's kind of like treating all of these instances as if they're like one mesh, like one object. So we can plug this in here. And when we do that, you'll notice all of the points will now be the same size and they won't match each other. They won't have the points on the same spots. So this is completely preferential. Um, when you have this rotated, it's not really as easy to tell that they're all the same. So if you prefer the look, then you know you don't have to realize the instances. I like to realize the instances, so I'm going to do that. So once again, we're just going to grab this instance on points node, shift D to duplicate, drag that in here. Once again, grab the original geometry, use that as the instance. So we can reuse a lot of stuff here. If we want, we can reuse this rotation. I'll just take the scale, plug it directly into the rotation over here to randomize that. So now we have the same control for our particles and our subparticles. 
We can also reuse the scale from the combine XYZ over here. So we can just plug that in. But if we want these to be noticeably smaller, we'll just bring in a, uh, a vector math node. Make sure we plug that into the right spot. And I'll change this to scale. And now we can control like the maximum scale of these. So I'll just change this to something small like 0.2 for now. And now it's a little more apparent that we have like some sub particles like that. And while we're at it, I'm just going to take a group input and just plug this into things that I think I'm going to want to use. So I'll plug one into the scale right here for the rotation. I'll use one for the W, the scale, and we'll use one for the seed for the random rotation right there. And we'll use the same one for the seed for our distribute on points. Subparticle scale, the density, this is for the subparticles, and one for the regular particles. And we can reorder these with the arrows however we want to do that, you know. Okay, one other option that I like to have is being able to distort this crystal right here. So to do this, I'll bring in a set position right here. We'll use the color output for uh, from our noise texture and we'll just plug it into the offset right here. So this is gonna start distorting it immediately. We want it to uh, be distorted in the normal direction instead of in the global. That's why it's being pushed this way. Instead of being pushed like in the positive direction in our uh, in our environment, we want it to just push away from itself, kind of the way that the displace modifier would work. So to do that, you can just bring in a normal node right here, and you just want to um, bring in a vector math node. And what we're going to do is just multiply this with the normal. I'll use a scale, plug this in right here, and now it's uh, pushing outward, and we can control how much it's pushing outward with another scale. We'll just drop it in right here. So if I set it to zero, it'll be normal. And when we push outward, this is this is what's happening. And since we're using the same noise texture, you can change how it's distorting with the scale. So that's the distortion scale right here. If we turn this up, it'll start acting a little differently. If you prefer, you can use a different texture for that. That's up to you. So the way we're doing this right now, it's deforming our main mesh and then instancing it on itself. If you want to start distorting things like everything individually, you would have to do all of this, but um, at the end over here. I'll just drag it over really quick just to show you what that looks like. And you can see now they're all kind of distorting separately. But for the subparticles to work, we're going to have to realize these instances too. I'm just going to leave this at the front. All right, so now that we have this set up, we don't even really need to be in the Geometry Nodes workspace to play with this. We can go back into Layout, and we can just do everything from the Modifiers panel over here. So let's try this out. I'll rename this and try it out on a different mesh now. I'll rename it Crystal Generator just like a default cube, something like that. You can add a geometry nodes modifier right here and just select the crystal generator. Let's scale this down a little. So this is what it looks like as cubes. Right off the bat, it looks pretty neat, pretty complex. Um, with the cubes, I like to turn the rotation off or down just really low, like that maybe. Um, and I think it looks good with a lot of sub particles. So actually, let's just turn these up really high and see what, what happens. So this looks kind of like a mineral. And one thing that's cool about this is we can go into edit mode, just turn this off so we don't see the modifier when we're in edit mode. And if we want, we can alter this however we want, and it should update for us. All right, let's see what that looks like in object mode now. All right, let's go into the shading workspace now. So the, here's one tip for if you're using cycles and you wanna make this look uh, like glass. I'll switch into cycles. So with this selected, we can just add a new texture. I'm just gonna delete this and replace it with a glass shader right there. You can plug that in and we'll just make this a little more complex. When you start adding a lot of these on top of each other, it'll look kind of dark. Um, if you turn the index of refraction to one, this is basically making it so it's like there's no refraction really. You can see we have this like big dark blob. 
Um, and that is there because we just need more samples. So if you go over to your render properties under light paths, you'll see transmission, it caps out at 12. So what we can do is just, I'm just gonna turn the total up to something ridiculously high, like 1024. And now when we turn the transmission up, you'll see the, that black blob kind of go away. When you try to render stuff with a lot more samples, it will take a little longer. When we move this index of refraction up a little, you'll see it's not nearly as dark and we're actually getting some good refraction in there. So I'll change this to like 1.3 or something. And if you add in some lights, you can make this look even better, but you're not going to lose as much information inside. And we can change the color of this, make it look kind of interesting, maybe something pink. And we'll put another light in the front. I'll turn the samples down a little. I'll do 2048. We'll see what this looks like once it's rendered. All right, that's it for this one. Once again, you can find all of the project files on my Patreon. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.